Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post the videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. Today's video, the title says above, is going to be my first book review, which I'm so excited. Well, it's not my first book review, but um, it's my first book review as far as like reviewing biblical fiction, if I'm not mistaken. But um, yes, if you would have seen a few Saturdays back, I did a book talk on Tessa Abshar and all of her books, doing a quick overview. And in that video, I said I would do individual book reviews for her novels. And we are starting that today. So we are going to be starting off with my favorite Pearl in the Sand. This is absolutely my favorite novel from her ever. This is the first novel from her Old Testament series. She has four Old Testament series and four New Testament books. I said series. Four Old Testament books and then four New Testament books. Um, so yes, this is the first book that she published. I believe she published this back in 2010. This came from, oh my god, what is it called? Moody Publishers. <laughs> and um, I first initially read this on my phone through ebook and then I got a physical copy and reread it with you ladies for the Daughter of Increase book club and a lot of you guys enjoyed it. So quick background about this. This is a biblical fiction novel based on the story of Rahab from Joshua chapter 2 but this book does cover a lot from Joshua. Um, I think it's Joshua chapters 1 through 10 and a little bit of the Gospels as well and um, this deals with rape. It deals with um, sexual sin it deals with marriage um, it deals with learning to love yourself it deals with a lot of family issues and just personal identity and I think it is absolutely phenomenal um, this is by far my favorite book ever from Tessa Abshar and this is by far my favorite bi biblical fiction novel just because it's near and dear to my heart and I can relate to it on so many different levels and um, it helped me to love myself a lot more and understand the difference between me looking at myself and how God sees me so that's that. Um, so I'm going to quickly just read the back of the book and then talk about this book on the surface level. I don't want this video to be super long-winded. Um, I don't want it to have spoilers. I just want to give you enough information that will intrigue you and pull you into wanting to read this story. So let's go on to reading the synopsis. Strike and beauty comes at a price. Rahab paid it when at the age of 15 she was sold into prostitution by the one man she loved and trusted, her father. With her keen mind and careful planning, she turned heartache into success, achieving independence while still young. And she vowed to never ever trust a man again. Any man. God had other plans. Into the emotional turmoil of her world walked Salmon, a prominent leader of Judah, held in high esteem by all Israel, a man of faith, honor, and pride, an enemy. What is a woman with a wrecked past to do when she wants to be loved yet no longer believes it possible? The walls of Jericho are only the beginning. The real battle for Rahab will be one of the heart. So, that's the synopsis. So let's talk about this book a little bit. As you heard from the synopsis, it starts off in chapter 1 with a whammy. Um, with her father basically putting her up for prostitution. He wants to give her, or sell her rather, to the temple so that they can make money. Um, keep in mind, this story begins in Jericho. Um, where Rahab and her family are a part of the, you know, they are from Jericho, they are paganists, they believe in the various gods and goddesses, um, and stuff like that. So, one thing I appreciate about this book is that Rahab, already from the beginning of the story, had a very strong dislike for the gods of her people. She did not care for them, she knew that they did not really help, and she pretty much knew that they were not real, um, which I enjoyed. But anyways, as I was saying... So her father wants to sell her to the temple to be a priestess and we understand that the temples back then were basically, they were whorehouses and I'm sorry to say it that way but that's basically what they were. Um, you had people going to the temples, having sex, worshipping Baal and Moloch and um, Ash, Ash, Ashrata, Ashtera. I don't know what Baal, one of Baal's wives was but the goddess of fertility I, think, I believe it was. Um, so... She said she didn't want to do that because she already had a strong dislike for the gods because of a specific reason that happened, which you have to read the story to understand. I'm not going to spoil it, but there is a reason why she does not like the gods and goddesses of her people anymore, um, which was emotional to me, really heartbreaking. But um, so she decides she's going to do this on her own and her father and everybody's like, whatever, you're, you're not going to be able to do this. Um, but she actually proves to them that she can. Um, and she goes to one person that she knows and it shocks her father because her father never fully paid attention to her. Her father never really showed her any type of love and emotion, which irritated me. It irritated me how the lack of affection he gave her, for better words. Um, so basically from the age of 15 to 26, she is doing this on her own. She's making money. She's providing for her family by using her body, which when you do that, you really are making... Um, 
yourself vulnerable there's something she said and i'm actually gonna turn to the page in chapter three it starts off with this and it says nobody knew better than rahab the destructiveness of her profession nobody knew better what it did to your soul when you gave away your body without emotional attachment without commitment without hope of a future no pleasure could fill the gulf of loneliness that widened each day and um that's at chapter three so i mean you're getting hit from chapter one chapter two it's just like she's going all out in chapter three you get hit with that and it's just like she's doing so much to provide for her family she's loving her family but the, her family has treated her like trash um even after she had her first time experience with a guy and came back her family was just like well she's useless now pretty much and it was terrible the way they treated her um, so she pretty much had to figure things out on her own. But what I liked is that even though Rahab was a prostitute or a Zana, as people say, um, she didn't succumb to the full lifestyle. She was very particular about the people she was with, and she was very much um, dedicated to that one person for a certain amount of time. So she wasn't out here just being all willy-nilly with every piece of man that came through. She was very particular. She was very... Um, she held herself with such class, which I liked. Sounds weird, but she was a classy Zana. Sounds weird. But um, anyway, so fast forward, the two Hebrew spies come. She saves them. Um, she helps them escape. They promise to save her with the red ribbon or uh, the red, red string, red ribbon. I can't remember what if it was a string or a ribbon, but the red, you know, the red thing. Um, so they leave, they go, they speak to Joshua about it. And this is when we finally get to meet Salmon. And Salmon is... As much as I love him, I'm, I'm okay. I'm gonna read what I wrote, okay? So I wrote that Salmon was one of the leaders of Hebrew. Um, he was of the tribe of Judah. He was the right hand man to Joshua. And though he was a man of God, he was also pig headed and judgmental. I enjoyed watching Salmon learn about himself from from a man um, he admired. He was a stubborn man, but I think that's what made him the perfect man for Rahab. So Salmon is very judgmental. Um, very judgmental. He was quick to condemn Rahab when they first met, even before he met her, when he found out that um, Ezra in, I think it's Hanani, Hanani, is that who it was? Oh gosh. All these names, you guys, I really can't remember, but I believe it's Hanani. Yes, Hanani, I had to look. Um, so Ezra and Hanani are the two Hebrew spies that were sent and she saved, so they're telling Joshua about um, Rahab and what she did to help them, and... Um, Salmon immediately gets upset that they promised to help her and save her um, because she's a Zona. He's like, well, she needs to get stoned and she's a paganist and stuff like that. And Joshua is such a kind man. Oh, God, I love Joshua. Joshua was, was, Joshua was just so amazing. Like, the wisdom that he, the wisdom and knowledge that he spit just oh, gave me life. Um, Salmon, though I loved him, he was a very much judgmental person. Um, I'm trying to find some quotes, but I don't want to give too much away. Um, but it was just, it's so good. So, I'm, like I said, I'm not trying to give too much away. I don't want to spoil it, but I want to give you enough to be intrigued enough to get the book. So, we have Rahab, who she innocently doesn't know how to turn off her sex appeal, in a sense. And it's not that she's purposely trying to be sexy, because she doesn't. She is one of those women who just happens to kind of exude that sex appeal without having to try, and she she's not aware of it, honestly. Rahab is literally so clueless about herself sometimes that I think it's funny. But um, Salmon immediately gets irritated because she knows she's, that she's a Zana, and um, he has in his mind that she slept with half the people of Jericho. Like, this, in his mind, she is worthless, she needs to be stoned to death, and for him to be of the tribe of Judah, he's very much like, he thinks he's above everything else. And I love the way Joshua kind of like knocks him upside his head. Love it so much. Um, so yeah, they have a, a, a tough time of um, cat and mouse, if you will, between Joshua and Rahab. And um, not Joshua and Rahab, Rahab and Simone. And I think that's what I liked is that the romance wasn't immediately there. Like Rahab immediately had an attraction to him and he had an attraction to her but they pretty much tried to fight it because they just did not want to like each other um so it's almost kind of like that friends to enemies or friends enemies to lovers kind of trope if you will but um they build so much on it and i think it is so phenomenal the way their romance grows and even in that they do get married because joshua makes him marry her um which you have to read that joshua basically in essence 
It's not that he makes Simone marry her, but Simone begins to understand his feelings, but he doesn't know how to express his feelings. So it's it's hilarious to me. You have to read it um to understand. But um what I'm going to read quickly is what I wrote. So I said that Rahab was a true woman of faith. She had more faith in God than some of the Israelites did. She believed and trusted him. She had a pure heart despite her own misfortune and upbringing. She knew that the Lord would help the Hebrews prevail against her people. She also helped to prepare um, to give up everything to help them. She was a woman that cared deeply for the Lord, but she was wounded badly in her heart. And watching her grow and learn about God and be open to true love was fantastic. Um, and then the romance, I said that the romance between Rahab and Salmon was definitely one ordained by the Lord himself. They were the key to each other's hearts and true love. Rahab had never been in love. She was betrayed by men time and time again, including her father. Um, and she was always, she was also ruined, so she couldn't think of ever being married. Salmon was previously married. We ain't gonna talk about that, but he was previously married. And his previous marriage was crazy. Um, I'm, I'm, his previous marriage was crazy. We're going to leave it at that. Um, so yeah, I said that he was given to Rahab to repair her and Rahab was given to Salmon so that he could know what a true treasure of God was. They were perfect in their imperfectness and I love their romance and watching it bloom. Um, and then we're, we're going to leave it at that as far as the romance. You just read it. Um, I do want to talk about the title real quick of this book, Pearl in the Sand. If you guys don't know, um, what I specifically love about Tessa is that her book titles are always explained within the last five chapters of the novel and I'm going to actually look for that right now okay so I'm just going to quickly read to you guys the scene that really um puts everything into perspective for the title of the book okay so basically Rahab has lost a gift from um an earring that was a gift from Salmon to her on their wedding night and um she lost it. She was desperate to find it. And Simone found it in the sand. And it was like probably a whole day that it was stepped on and stuff like that. So he uses the pearl earring to, um, he uses it basically to help her understand God's love. So I'm going to quickly read it. Um, so it says, you found it, she cried. Leave it, he commanded. What do you mean, leave it? I mean, it's no good anymore. It's been lying in the sand a whole night and day. See the mark of the footsteps? It's been trampled on again and again. It's ruined. No, it's not. I can see it is fine. It needs a careful washing, perhaps, but it will be good as new as soon as I give it some proper care. People have stepped on it, I tell you. It's worthless now. Of course it isn't. Jewels don't lose their value because they're dirty. It's still a pearl, even if it's been stepped on. What's wrong with you anyway? Why are you acting this way? Give me my earring. Then he says, not until you understand. She yells, what? Then he held it away from her and said, you are this earring. So he then says, I don't need fig wine. I need you to see something, Rahab. You seem to value this earring above your other possessions. You appreciate its inherent value as gold and pearl. But even beyond gold and pearl, it means nothing. It means something more to you. It represents great worth in your sight. That's why you are like this earring. Don't you see? God looks upon you the way you look upon this delicate jewel. And I'm not going to read it anymore because I want you guys to read it. But um, the whole idea of us being a jewel that, you know, even if that jewel has been stamped on, even if it's been dirtied, even if it's been messed up, the fact that we appreciate that jewel's um, beauty is something we need to be able to apply to ourselves and I think that was what got me is that I was harboring a lot of hurt and stuff like that you guys like I said know some of my story I'm um, from my testimonies but um the way that Tessa was able to take this concept of a jewel a pearl and explain that in a way literally I was I was bawling in tears like it's it's such a phenomenal story such a phenomenal well-written book it is very relatable it is so realistic she uses some scriptures that really will awaken your mind to the things of god and um i just highly recommend this book it is literally like i said my favorite i will continuously read this book over and over and over and over and over again um because of how much it means to me and how much i learned about myself and um it just proves that no matter how dirty you feel no matter how messed up you may think you are god still loves you no matter how many people you know trample over you no matter how many people disappoint you god still loves you and god can still use you for greatness and um 
I just I just think it's such an amazing story and I definitely definitely recommend you guys to check it out and read it um I will always recommend this book as like my number one for people to read because it's just so profound um but I think that's it for this video probably a little too long I don't know how many minutes this is um hopefully not over 40 <laughs> But um, that is it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for subscribing. If you aren't subscribed, subscribe. And if you are, click the little bell to stay notified. Thumbs up this video. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Again, all the links are in the description box. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.